I'm Rachel, and today we'll be providing you with a basic training on how to use a laryngoscope. While this video is intended to provide basic instruction, it's important to always follow your institution's protocols. Now, before I hand it over to Eric, our medical professional, I'd like to point out a few key features of a disposable laryngoscope. Since this device is single use, you're avoiding the risk of cross-contamination. Additionally, there are significant cost savings to be had because the cost to re-sterilize a blade and handle is greater than the cost of a single disposable laryngoscope. Now, thanks to the ergonomic soft grip handle design, this ensures that users of all hand sizes can firmly grasp and use this device. The metal blade will ensure that it stays rigid during insertion. Thanks to our advanced cool LED lighting, you're going to have advanced visualization of the tissue while ensuring that the light does not heat up during use. And over to Eric. Thank you, Rachel. So in order for us to perform endotracheal innovation, we need to start off by checking our equipment. In this instance, we have two different types of blades. We have our Miller blade and our Macintosh blade. We want to ensure that we have a properly working light and that there's no dings, nicks, dirt, and that kind of thing on our blades. We want to ensure that the hinge works very, very well and that we have a good battery within as well. We also want to ensure that we have our ET tube with the stylet and a 10cc syringe that's pre-attached to our ET tube. We have our BBM with the mask still attached to it, and then a tube tamer or a roll of tape in order to secure our ET tube once we have it in place. To start off, we want to position the head properly and pre-oxygenate the patient. Pre-oxygenating is going to allow more oxygen to get to the patient due to the fact that the patient may be without oxygen for up to 15 to 20 seconds during innovation. Once the patient is pre-oxygenated, we're going to reposition the head into a really good sniffing position. We want to make sure that the nose is pointed directly upwards and that we have a good visual of inside the mouth. Once we have the patient's head positioned properly, we're going to insert uh, the laryngoscope blade on the right side of the patient's mouth and sweep left, trying to push the tongue out of the way in order to get a good visualization of the vocal cords. Once we visualize the vocal cords, we then take our ET tube, insert it, and physically watch it pass through the vocal cords. Once we have it in place, we remove the blade, pull the stylet, and inflate the cuff with 10 cc's of air. Once we have that completed, we want to make sure that the BVM is flowing well and that we have good chest rise, ensuring that the tube is in proper position. This mannequin will provide a better view anatomically for blade insertion. As we can see here in the orange, we have our epiglottis and the vellicula behind that, as well as our vocal cords down below here. We'll start with the Macintosh blade. As we insert the Macintosh blade, note that we don't go very far down, just enough to visualize the epiglottis. Once we have the epiglottis visualized, we advance a little bit more into the vellicula and then lift upwards, visualizing the vocal cords. With the Miller blade, Note that we insert a little bit farther than the Macintosh. As we go down, we're going to visualize the epiglottis, go past the epiglottis, and once we're past it, lift directly up, visualizing the vocal cords. Now I'm going to hand this over to Rachel, and she's going to continue to ventilate the patient while I secure the tube with the tube tamer. It's also important to note, as you're placing the tube tamer, the length of the tube. In this case, we have the tube at about 23 uh, at the teeth, which is about normal for an average adult. We wrap this behind, and the tube is now secured. And now we have successfully intubated our patient. Thank you.